This is Neil Pittori. In this segment, I'm going to talk about MRE FSK, and I'm going to talk about the probability for non-coherent reception. And non-coherent reception, as you saw, for a particular frequency, we're going to correlate with both the sine and the cosine, adding those squared values together. So that calculation of energy at uh, frequency zero um, is going to be compared to the same thing at other frequencies. And in MRE FSK, we're going to have more than two. So there's going to be um, M uh, frequencies. So the Paracas and Salehi book explains that uh, under HI, that ith channel, that ith frequency, or will have a Ricean distribution, and all of the others, hj for j not equal to i, will have a uh, Rayleigh. distribution. Um, and this refers to the distribution of the energy. So at this point, the, the uh, squared energy, r squared at frequency 0, r squared at frequency 1, all the way up to r squared at m minus 1. And because of these distributions, you can calculate what the probability of error is, the, the probability that this, given that I was sent, that the, um, that the Ricean distributed energy at that correct frequency will be higher than the energy recorded in all the other frequencies. And that turns out that there is an analytical expression for this probability. It's uh, given in the book, or sorry, in the handout from Farrakis and Salehi, it's exactly equal to this particular probability. Again, we have these exponential terms when we end up with a non-coherent receiver. This is similar to that. Um, of course, I don't expect you to memorize this, but this is a formula that we should have available to us uh, if we ever need to calculate the probability of symbol error for non-coherent FSK. Now, this is the probability of symbol error, and there are log base 2 bits per symbol. We have this constellation diagram in FSK where for 2FSK, binary FSK, we have a two-dimensional plot and we have symbols here. For three-dimensional FSK, we can draw it in three dimensions. Every time we add one more to the M, capital M for FSK, we need to add one more dimension. But what's happening is that here, you can see it here. Uh, starting with two FSK, I've got each symbol has one neighbor. With three FSK, each symbol has two neighbors. And these are equally distant. So I always have M minus one equally distant neighbors. in MRE FSK. So keep that in mind because now we're going to calculate the probability of bit error. You know here I might be sending a 1 or a 0, um, 3 FSK, you know I don't know uh, how we want to represent it, but if I was sending 4 FSK I would be sending 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1 in the fourth dimension. That fourth dimensional symbol that I can't really draw is equally distant to the other three symbols. So when I make a symbol error, 
say I send symbol two, symbol one, symbol zero, symbol three in 4FSK would be equally likely to be uh, the symbol that I decide in error because they're all the same distance away. So what I have then is I have m minus 1 symbols equally likely. And so those errors are the probability of symbol error. divided by m minus 1. This is the probability of each particular symbol error in m area FSK. And so what I want to do is I want to think about what is the number of errors per symbol on average. So this is the expected value of the number of errors per symbol. Well, each one of these symbols has equal likelihood. But the question is, what is the expected number of bit errors that I'd make for these particular symbols? I'm scared to, to imagine what you're thinking about me trying to draw a fourth dimensional FSK signal. Um, but I've got these three symbols in my three dimensions that I can draw very easily. And then I'm just going to add in a fourth dimension here uh, because I need to. And I'm going to draw a symbol equally distant from the origin. And you've got to imagine in this that these distances are equal. Okay, for all three of these. I've got 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. It doesn't matter how I number them because, again, when I make a symbol error, it's equally likely that I go to all of the other three symbols. And let's say I send a 1, 1. If I go to V3 or V1, uh, V1 I'm going to make one, sim one bit error. If I go to 0, 0, I'm going to make two bit errors. So it's possible for me to make two. The question is how many I'm making on average. So what we do is we sum uh, from n equals 1 to log base 2 of m. Now here, little n represents the number of bits I make in error. So number of bits I make an error multiplied by the number of ways that I can have uh, that many errors. That can happen log base 2 of m uh, choose n ways. That's because there are for one error there's log base 2 choose one way to make that error. For two errors there are log base 2 of m choose two ways to make that error. Two choose one is two, two choose two is one. So this matches with our intuition for 4FSK. For each of these situations, the probability of that symbol being an error is this. So I can solve this because we've learned the binomial formula. So let's leave this first part the same. Let's bring out a factor of 2 to the log base 2 of m out front. And let's put in an n equals 0 here because n equals 0 is just going to be 0, so I don't need to exclude it from the sum. But to cancel out this 2 to the log base 2 of m here, I'm going to put in a 1 half to the log base 2 of m. And now you might recognize this as the binomial probability. You studied it when you studied uh, maybe, for example, the probability of getting a certain number of heads out of a certain number of tosses. Here the number of tosses is log base 2 of m, and the number of heads would be little n. 
and the probability of each head or tail would be one half. This is the binomial, it's the, sorry, the expected value for a binomial. And you can look that up on Wikipedia under the binomial distribution. You can see that that comes out to be n, sorry, log base 2 of m times the probability 1 half. In general, it's, in Wikipedia, you'll see it says NP, where this is N and this is P, but I've kind of, I'm using different letters here to try to match the uh, Paracas and Salehi uh, handout. Anyways, this 2 to the log base 2 of M, you'll recognize that's M. And so what we get here out of this whole thing is the probability of symbol error divided by m minus 1 times m over 2 times log base 2 of m. Okay. Finally, this is the number of errors per symbol. So we actually, we usually want the number of errors per bit, which we call the probability of bit error. And this is going to be the probability, sorry, the expected number of errors per symbol divided by the number of bits per symbol. I'm going to be left with m over 2 on top, m minus 1 on bottom, multiplied by the probability of symbol error. So we get this strange looking relationship that the probability of bit error is equal to m divided by 2 over m, plus, m minus 1 times the probability of symbol error. And this is an exact result. So in terms of plotting the results for these formulas, and this is, uh, this is the probability of bit error, error in here, um, it's the probability of bit error for MRE FSK for non-coherent reception, the same formulas that we've ta just talked about. The, most interesting thing about MRE FSK to me is that uh, as the M goes up, the probability of bit error goes down. And I'll show that. Here on this axis, we've got the probability of bit error. On top is the highest bit error, and the bottom is 10 to the minus 6, the very low bit error rate. And then on the x-axis, we've got the EB over n naught ratio and dB, so the energy per bit divided by the noise power spectral density. Let's take a particular EB over n naught ratio, say 8. As you get m changing from 2 to 4 to 8 to 16 to 32, that probability of bit error is going down almost a decade every uh, doubling of m. And that's great. That is unlike any other modulation we study. But it is using more bandwidth. As we go up from 2 to 4 to 8 to 16, every time we're doubling the bandwidth of our signal. But we're able to send signals at a lower EB over N naught rate. And so, for example, if I wanted to have a system with a probability of bit error of 10 to the minus 4, I could reduce the amount of EB over N naught if I, that I needed if I increased M. That kind of shows the numerical result of this exact formula for the probability of bit error for non-coherent reception of FSK.